hello today for me at least it's the first and uh, start of a new year let's hope 2022 is a little kinder to us these are the paints the gouache paints that I've made um, I'm going to swatch them now and we'll see how they go the paper I'm using is 100% um, cotton that I got from Amazon but I'm not totally happy with it because it's not a very heavy paper that's never ever pick up every tiny little mark we'll just ignore those so the first colour we have is a number I'll just dry my brush off a bit you can see it it's a nice opaque umber the second paint is a sienna I don't have too many browns because I, if I need them in the painting, I mix them as I go. I prefer to use primary colours to mix my browns. This is a Payne's Grey. It's got a blue base. I'm noticing that in the palette, the paints do look a bit gritty, but once they're on the paper, grit dissolves or goes away. They're not gritty on the paper. This is a carbon black. Once again, don't use an awful lot of black, but it is a nice black. Well, I have a purple. This I mixed, it didn't come from a signal, single pigment. And I have another purple, which is a little warmer, so I might do that one next to it so we can see the difference. Might be a little wet. So one's a blue, one's definitely more pink. So cooler and warmer. We'll go back up. Light blue. A very pretty baby blue. And a dark blue. This is the first one that's come down a little gritty on the page. So we'll see how that dries. We have a green. This is a, a blue-green, I was thinking, ocean. I made two of these. And I think I might have made them too much the same. So I'll put the other one next to it and we'll see if there's a difference. Let them dry and we'll be able to tell. And then...
This is a green that came pure as an oxide. And this is a green which I'm lightened a bit with a little bit of white and some yellow. Of course, you can paint with just the primary colours and do all your mixing on your palette. Now that's fun too. This way I won't run out of paint so quickly by just using a lot of primaries. Oh, where are we with the pinks? Now these two are quite similar, but as you dry, you'll see that one is warmer than the other. And a darker pink. And we'll set for painting roses. Sorry, ochre. So this is yellow ochre. Next time I put an order in, I will also get the red ochre. I, I just love mixing and playing with the different colours. I could have a palette of 50 colours, each one different, and I'd be in heaven. Red. A primary red's a little um, more magenta than this, but uh, they didn't have magenta. And this orange I mixed between the red and the yellow, which is coming up next, and is the last colour. And then we'll let these dry and we'll see how different colours go over them and the difference between layering and blending. Oh my goodness, that's pretty. I'm just going to change brushes now. I didn't swatch the white because it's white. And the paper is white so that would be a bit pointless but what I will do is go over the dried colors let's hope you can still see them as you can see I have a trimmer it is very annoying sometimes it makes painting a bit difficult so to layer you don't work it too much, you just put it on, fairly dry, not too wet. These colours are still drying. Whereas if you want to blend it, you get it a bit wetter. And you go over it. And just rub it into the colour underneath until the colour underneath activates. Didn't take very long because this is a, still a little damp. So you want to activate that colour underneath. And that will give you a different colour. So that's blending. That's layering. So blending is wet, layering is dry. We'll go back to our testing of the white <sighs> ok 
okay this dark blue it is still a bit gritty it's a pity what I can do to get rid of that is when I use it just act as if it's blend it needs blending and just work it in a bit more and next time I use that blue I make that blue I'll make sure that the pigment is mixed better and is also finer I might have to grind it a bit more I didn't grind any of these pigments they're art spectrum pigments and I expected that they were all fine enough these two colors are also a bit too much alike I would have liked one of them this one to be a darker this one to be more light so when I make them again I'll keep that in mind as you can see the white is doing a very good job of being opaque and layering over the top I'll just finish that it's still a bit damp dry spot here if I put it on damp it's going to mix like it did just here a little bit on the red as well So we'll do some more mixing now, we'll change colours maybe to a yellow and so I want the paint to be wetter and this green is still a bit wet here so save time, we'll just blend these together, you can see they blend quite nicely and just to show you can still layer a line across the top that won't blend I hope and uh, light blue on this pink it's very pretty baby blue I don't know if you can hear that but my birds in the aviary have just decided to start talking that's not too bad if Pluto the macaw starts to screech over I'll just put layer a bit on top of that so you can see the color it was before and the color it is mixed What else shall we do? Let's see what happens if we mix some of this blue green. Make it nice and wet with this red. The red is very strong, so. And because it's blue green and not just green we're going to get a vaguely purpley color it would make an excellent shadow and I'll just put a piece on a line on top of that so you can see that which colors were mixed it's actually this one this one here Now, if there's anything else you'd like to see about making gouache or mixing or blending gouache, please drop me a line in the comments and I'll try my best to answer you. Thank you very much.